I see beauty in my scar. They, they tell my story. And when I'm able to uplift myself from those positions and remind myself the grit that it's going to take to, to become successful. Jabari Ali Parker, born March 15th, 1995. If you're an OG supporter of this channel, you know that the very first video released on it was about Jaleel Okafor. The second, Jabari Parker, back in the early learning stages, and that video became a victim of those stages since being removed. But I've always admired Jabari Parker's game and had high expectations for him coming into the NBA. His story is still one of the more important examples of stunted growth because it's exactly what the term means to me. It's not that you're forever doomed, but that you had a setback or three that took you from the expectations had of you at some point and lowered your ceiling. Not that you can't bounce back and grow again, which is what Jabari is trying to do. Even with the setbacks, he still hasn't missed a season since entering the league and surprisingly is still just 27 years old. If you remember the hype between he and Andrew Wiggins, I would say beginning a little before their college season ended, many were building the two to be the next LeBron and Carmelo Anthony. It doesn't seem like it now, but Andrew Wiggins at one point, especially right before the draft, was seen to have a ceiling comparable to LeBron James. Parker eerily had a similar game to Carmelo, and the two were supposed to come in and carry the torch into this generation as the new iteration of the two legends. Eight years later, Andrew Wiggins I don't think anyone compares to LeBron anymore, much less any great player, but has had a solid career and even reached a fan-voted All-Star Game start last season. Jabari's journey wasn't at all that fortunate. Parker came in with mellow expectations, only for him, he was seen as possibly being even better than Carmelo because of his ability to put the ball on the floor and was much more athletic before his multiple run-ins with injury. He didn't have close to the career top 75 Carmelo had because of it, and some even call him a bust. He was all everything in high school, including a two-time Mr. Basketball in Illinois, the first time that's been done in the state, along with the Gatorade National Player of the Year as a junior. The expectations grew for Parker during his lone college season, where he looked like a future superstar that could do pretty much everything on the offensive end. He was taken second behind Wiggins, which has since been the highlight to a very unlucky career thus far. After eight seasons, did he meet expectations? No. And for these unlucky reasons, let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Y'all ready to keep this thing moving? Jabari Parker is a 6'8 power forward from Chicago, Illinois that early on knew basketball was the only thing he wanted to do with his future. By second grade, he was already more advanced than kids 3-4 grades higher than him and worked on his skills all day every day to avoid being caught up in the war going on in Chicago where big kids like Parker are easily recruited to join gang movements. By the time he hit 5th grade, he already had multiple Division I offers to play the guard position already 6 foot. He would continue the rich tradition of Simeon High School basketball as Chicago stars before him Derrick Rose and Ben Wilson to name a few. Ben, of course, being murdered before having his shot at greatness while still in high school. Parker was a starter since his freshman year, the first to do so in Simeon history. He was also the first non-senior to win Illinois Miss the Basketball as a junior, along with earning the cover of Sports Illustrated, calling him the best high school basketball player since LeBron James. He finished high school with every honor you could think of, winning an incredible fourth straight state championship and was ranked the number one high school player in the country at one point, finishing in the top five. As far as high school careers, Jabari may have had the greatest in history. Of 2013, I will be attending Duke University. Stunt number one, play style versus his body. 
The first reason I feel Jabari Parker's growth was stunted is because of the plethora of injuries to his lower extremities he suffered all the way back to his senior year in high school. Of course, the one we all remember is the one months into his rookie season on December 25th, 2014 against the Phoenix Suns, planting awkwardly on a fast break sidestep move, leading to only 25 games played as a rookie, still trying to find himself as a pro. When the injury happened, it first showed me that Jabari, as long as he played the way he did, was always going to have lower injuries for the rest of his career. Watching him closely, you can see that his moves were way too shifty and sharply planted for his body type and size. On every move he does, even his shooting motion seems overly exaggerated and sharp, making it tough on his lower body, especially growing to the size he did. At 6'8", 245 pounds, he's not exactly a small guy, and it's certainly not all muscle. Parker has always been a chubby kid. Chubby kids that grow to that size without turning that into muscle to me have this softness to their bones and muscles that make them susceptible to injury, and Parker was a good example. The best way I can explain Jabari's moves is like he glides whenever he leaves the floor, then suddenly plants himself on the ground to change direction, and he does this on every single play. Not just when he needs to, similar to D. Rose. Looking back, you knew D. Rose would get hurt because he used his athleticism on every single drive to the rim, even if to dish it off. It's the only thing saving Ja Morant. He's a willing passer, so all his moves to the basket aren't to explode for a score. He'll glide through and dish or just shoot the three. Jabari was all plant, all change, speed and direction, and it cost him to suffer injury after injury. After returning in 2015-16 from ACL surgery, Parker played 75 games and averaged 14 points a game and 5 boards. 16-17, he tore the ACL in the same knee and was ruled out once again after 51 games. This was a season Parker was playing great and a likely all-star at 20 points a game, 6 rebounds, shooting 36% from 3, but just missed a cut being injured right before. This led to the Bucks not extending him in 1718 and him being signed by the Bulls. Forward Jabari Parker has a torn ACL and will miss the rest of the season. Parker was part of a promising young core. Stunt number two, poorly suited teams. After being injured so often early into his career, Jabari Parker developed a stigma around his name that he was damaged goods. In the NBA and all professional levels, injury is the leading cause of growth stunts and the main reason players leave or are traded from one situation to another that's most times a poorly fitted situation for them and their play style. Jabari was steps away from becoming an all-star in his third and best career season 2016-17. By the time he got to the Bulls, the allure had worn off as he was deemed injury prone so not to be given opportunities like you would a potential star. He signed a two-year 40 million contract with the team after the Bucks let him walk and was playing well under Fred Hoiberg. Unfortunately, the Bulls weren't and Jim Boylan took over as head coach. Boylan immediately slashed Parker's minutes in favor of returning Bobby Portis and Jabari fell out the rotation. The team he landed on was another well-rounded scoring team traded with Bobby Portis to the Wizards, which obviously wasn't a great situation. He still averaged 15 points a game. The team declined their option on him that could have earned him $20 million. He signs with the Hawks and played just 32 games, averaging 15 points a game before getting injured again, this time to his shoulder in 2019-20. It was his final really productive season. From there, Sacramento for 9 games and Boston 22 games, waived in January 2022 and no team has since picked up his services. Stunt number 3, Diminished Opportunity and Skills. 
The first thing I realized when beginning this research journey was that Jabari is still just 27 years old. After everything he's been through, you would think he was at least 30 and entering the final years of his prime. But at his age, prime should just be beginning. Because of everything that transpired in his career, injuries and bus like stigma, Parker has seen less and less opportunity to show he can still play. Also at this point, his game has obviously been affected by his past as he's no longer explosive on his moves, his first step is gone, his confidence may not be as strong as it was, and he's not the height he can dominate using other learned behaviors. In the minutes he's gotten, he didn't look bad, but it's clear at such a young age, he's not the same player. Instead of developing further and going into his best years, he's regressed drastically in skills and opportunity. All in all, Jabari Parker is a victim of circumstances physically he couldn't control. NBA basketball though isn't made to pamper unavailable players. He's never played a full 82 game season in his career, good to cause teams to neglect how productive he could still be. At this point, is Parker a bust? Not exactly. Disappointing? Yes, but 14 points a game and 5 rebounds for his career is not too shabby. Unluckily, that career may just be over before its prime. Salute, much respect to Jabari Parker, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.